Yeah. Mr. Cool Reviews. We're back with another chapter of Undead Unloved. Now, if you love Undead Unloved, drop a like. And if you love Undead Unloved, say something in the comments. Now let's get into this review. What's going on? We're back for another chapter review of Undead Unluck. I'm coming at you kind of late. That's just my bad. I've just been kind of lazy. I didn't feel well over the weekend, so just felt like just chilling on Monday, to be honest. But we're here with Tuesday doing another review. I'm trying to get two videos out today, so let's just get into this. We're here with chapter 226, entitled Apocalypse. And oh my god, bro, I've been calling this for a while now about Apocalypse. We'll get to it near the end of the chapter, but... Yeah, this is an apocalypse chapter. The first page of this chapter is just a collage of um the different battles between all the superior rules. Justice up against Yusai, and it looked like he is pressing Yusai right now. He's got his sword out. I think it might be drawn already, so he's just gonna have to use her like swords swordswoman skills and like not really using her negation ability like that, because Unless she can bury the sword into into the ground somehow and make him not be able to pick it up again. But I feel like he has other like swords lying around that place for some reason but your side looks like she's getting pressed so it's gonna it's looking like it's gonna be tough next we have teller and billy fighting up against war they're just like under some cover at the moment just i guess assessing the situation they've literally just got an army bombarding them i'm imagining war can like produce an um, army amount of like uh jets and fighters like we've seen him uh summon Billy and Fuko are taking on Death and Luck, and yeah, there's like just a lot going on. I see Fuko shooting at one of uh, Death's um, juniors. Does Luck have any juniors? What who would he his juniors? Luck seems like a self buff kind of character the way he fights. I would assume because you wouldn't want to bestow your luck onto uh, onto your enemy. So I guess he's really lucky or something like that. Yeah, and he might be just a really powerful support type, and that's why he's working with Death at the moment. Like maybe her. Attacks have a high percentage of hitting because he's uh, helping her out. Gina and Change, it's weird how they have to like depict their fight. It's just like kind of cracks in the sky. I guess that's maybe Gina using unchanged air and change, changing the air back. Rip looks to be having a tough time with uh, Sick. Latler's just like consoling him, kind of like patting him on the back kind of thing. And I think he's bleeding out his mouth. So they're looking like they're having a tough time with Sick right now. And the same with time against Moy and Shen, really. He's like chilling, sitting on a chair at the moment, Aizen style. And it looks like Shen's launching off an attack at him. It looks like it could be a combined attack with their staff against time. But that is what everyone else is up to on the battlefield. This chat was going to mainly focus on Apocalypse and uh, Julia. Picking up where we left off in the last chapter. Julia's trying to get the past memories of Juiz from Apocalypse. So a concrete getting that now, they want Julia to experience Julia's memory so that she can unlock injustice and specifically the same injustice that Julia's had. Fuku explains that the circumstances that Julia's unlocked injustice was way too unique and specific of a time period of the world Julia's was from because she was probably there before even a couple like master rules were like established. So the best shot of them getting Julia to actually manifest that specific unjust as variant is for her to re-experience those exact same memories of Dewey's. Now we get into a question that I was wondering myself, like even though she just like touches Apocalypse, usually it's just like a massive information attack and it's not like even specific memories. It doesn't seem like it's specific memories anyway. How would we get those specific memories of Dewey's manifesting injustice? And Julia also mentions that Apocalypse doesn't have to share the information. You can touch him and don't suffer an information attack. It, it's an attack he can willingly impose upon you if you're touching him. But in response to all this, Fuko lets Julia know that she just has to touch Apocalypse and believe in his vision of justice because Ju Juiz also came to acknowledge this vision of justice that Apocalypse has. And this hints heavily to the point I've always been ma making that Apocalypse acts like he doesn't fuck with everyone, but he the homie for real, bro. Like, he, Juiz knew it, and Fuko knows it. Apocalypse just fronting right now. He's, he's, a, he, he's our man on the inside. But anyway, Burn comes out of nowhere, and it turns out 
that with this new powered up version of Apocalypse, he's able to manifest the memories that he has stored. So he's making literal copies of Uma's. Julia does says Burn seems a bit smaller, so maybe not at the full power of them, but it looks pretty tough enough. It looks strong enough if he's able to summon like more of them. He He's about to summon Spoil right now, but in this chapter, we only see him summon two. I wonder what his upper limit could be. But going back to when Burn was summoned, Injin comes out of nowhere and he's unburned, so literally the best opponent for Burn right now. And he smacks into Burn, and Burn is still made out of like rock and stuff, so Injin's pretty strong himself. He's pretty hu superhuman at that to like, because he's punching Burn and like there's like rubble falling off of him. He's like punching bare rock and breaking it. Spoil gets summoned as well, but Ishin and Top come out of nowhere and just flying kick Spoil right in the face. I was thinking Spoil is pretty dangerous as a Uma, his like ability, but it's looking like they'll be able to finish him off pretty decently because they land a pretty heavy blow on him. We get a small panel here where Apocalypse just comments and says she's like her. And who I think he definitely meaning Julia is just like Juiz, even though they're not the same person. They're literally not the same person. And he's about to say her name, Juiz, but he gets cut off by Sol. And Sol is, I guess, still kind of chilling. He doesn't seem to be too happy with Luna, but he's just going along with it as as it is. It's all he's just a part of the game. He's just going along with it. He's giving a little bit of Kizaru vibes at the moment. Sol just wants Apocalypse to kill Julia. Before you had to give them all these like impossible quests to do, but all that BS is done now. We're at the end, end game now. So Julia goes leaping in, and Apocalypse has his mouth wide open. It looks like he, she's, he's about to like just eat Julia. And Apocalypse chomps down and takes her arm. And from here, you already know. From here, I'm just like, he definitely could have just at her hole. There's no way he just mi missed by her arm. She was leaping in. He wasn't pulling back. She has no way she's pulling back. He just has to keep his mouth open for like a bit longer. And Apocalypse starts speaking and he's just asking her, why do you all persevere so much? And we go into a flashback with Apocalypse and Juiz. And in this flashback, Juiz is basically just like kind of thanking Apocalypse for the quests he's given them. Like she says, they're like the worst. Victor says that they're the worst in the world, but they're also the best around. Because with all the quests that he's given them, it's allowed them to actually grow stronger. And it's real cute seeing like this moment between Juiz and uh, Apocalypse. Because like, there was always a hint that Apocalypse did care somewhat about Juiz. And it's crazy to see how they were actually like this close where she could just hold him like a pet in her lap. And we go back to the present and he's just bawling his eyes out right now. And Zol says he's lost control over him. So I wonder if it's that Zol's been having control over him, making him such a dick or just in that like final moment so like was like controlling him a little bit but anyway Soul's just he's clenching his fist he's like eh to apocalypse uh, yeah it looks like Soul's like revoking some power from him so Soul is actually like pretty high up on he is the number one like superior rule the first rule ever made so he's like so high on the tier list he's he's revoking privileges because uh apocalypse uh, broke the rules apparently I, I don't know what rules he broke specifically, just not trying to kill her, I guess. Apocalypse is going to give Julia all the memories that she wants of Dewey specifically. Probably not going to be a harsh information attack, but we're getting Unjustice back. So it's going to be insane to see um Julia go around the battlefield, like mopping up these superior rules. It probably won't be too easy. She will have just got the ability, but it's a broken ass ability. So it'll be fun to see. And it looks like we're gonna get a Victor and Dewey's flashback, which is great because I always had a Victor video in mind. I recorded some audio for it and I never listened to it again. Uh, but after this flashback, I might have to dig that up and like redo that Victor video. But yeah, this is the end. That is the end of the chapter. Apocalypse gives his final reward. He says quest complete. And this is his final act as the rule book. Like I said, I'm trying, I'm going to try and do another video. So that'll be all for me. Thank you for watching. See you later.